Hello, James here, and I'm doing a quick follow up video about my HTC HD2 running Android. In this case, I was running the Super ROM um, Froyo build from Darkstone. Now, I've been reading on the forums that a lot of people have been having trouble. I mean, not just with um, this ROM, but other ROMs. I noticed that some people have the same or similar problems over and over again, and I don't necessarily think it's the ROMs. I think there might be a few things that maybe could be done to solve the problem. Well, sometimes there are simple things. Uh, the first thing um, I did, and, oh, and once again, this may not solve your problem. I'm just basically showing you what I did, and I actually don't have any problems at all now. Uh, the few simple things I did was one, um, the SD card that came with the phone, I mean I got the phone over a year ago and although SD cards are supposed to last a long time, with sustained reads and writes, um, you know, they're supposed to last quite a few years. Um, however, uh, when you think about the way we run the ROM or the Android ROM files off the SD card, there's a lot of sustained reads and writes probably to the same areas of the card, so it's no wonder that some cards may actually go bad. Um, I've actually had two accounts of people, of people I know, that say that when they did this, eventually their cards went bad. So when I wanted to use the Super ROM Froyo, I actually went out and got a new Kingston SD card. Now let me turn the macro setting on on my camera here, so you can see this. There we go. So I actually got a Class uh, 10 Kingston SD card. Uh, the next thing you want to do is make sure you buy your SD cards from a reputable source. If you get it online and it's really cheap and it's so good, you got to get it. There's a good chance it might just be a knockoff from China. Um, if you use those, they may uh, either perform under par, poorly, or heck, you may even have trouble reformatting them. They may just die on you. They may not even be the size you think they are. Um, they're really hard to tell, so make sure you get yours from a reputable source. I just went to the store and bought mine. I, I, it's worth paying the extra money for a card you know is going to work. So when I got this card, I didn't um, use the standard format, although it comes formatted. I did all the same testing I did in one of my other videos. Go take a look at the video I did on SD card performance for the ROMs. And I uh, decided to reformat it, not with the default settings, but using 64K allocation units. The reason I chose that is because, well, that's what my test came out to be. If you saw my video before, you might have noticed I thought 32K allocation units were better. But in this case, the, um, it's a whole different card, so I did the testing again. Now, the um, other thing I want to make sure everybody realizes is that, um, the, not the SD card, but the SIM card may have a lock on it. Uh, the SIM lock, not the phone lock, but the SIM lock. And what I found is that when Android installs, you don't want to have the SIM lock or pin um, assigned in the SIM card. Uh, that often, I found, makes the system freeze during the install. And even if it does get past that, you might have a partial install. I've had so much trouble with that. Using the same ROMs with the pin during the install and without the pin, I've had no trouble when I had no pin during the install. I've had no trouble with the ROM for weeks after that, but with the same build, I would have constant crashes and freezes, uh, sleep of death, thing wouldn't wake up, thing would reboot itself, only if the install included the SIM, uh, the SIM lock. So take that off, put it back on after the install and the first reboot. Uh, that actually helped quite a bit. Now, the next thing I did was um, how to um, start Android when you turn the phone on. I actually put my phone back to the latest update of Windows Mobile for the um, HTC HD2 for T-Mobile US. I did that so that I have the option to go use it. Um, however, I did remove Sense and I'm using SPB um, Shell Mobile. I found Sense was the root of all of my problems. It was what caused my email and my text to not work and heck, the phones actually worked really, really well. No freezes or crashes ever since I removed HTC Sense. HTC Sense, um, just bad on Windows Mobile. Uh, Windows Mobile is bad already, but HTC Sense, HTC Sense made it worse. 
Okay, now when I start my phone up, I start it up, no HTC Sense. I unlock everything, including my SIM lock. If, I, if you have one, unlock it in Windows Mobile. Don't unlock it in Android. I found that I actually had less problems after that. Um, once everything is stable, I then would start Android manually. I do, all I did was re rename the default text file that's used alongside the Harith program. And I know it looks tedious, but I just start it manually whenever I want to. Anyway, usually when I start it, I can leave it for a whole week and never ever go, ever go back to Windows Mobile. And then I just let it run. There we go. It usually takes about 30 seconds to boot from here. Because remember, when you're doing this, um, Windows Mobile, you know, started your machine up and you're running this from there. It's not going to ask you for the SIM lock code again. You've already unlocked it. It will, however, ask you for the lock code. Don't mistake that for the SIM lock. Now, um, I found that uh, using this process, the phone will run the whole day. Um, no crashes, no freezes. It'll easily wake up from sleep. Um, I don't have any random reboots. Uh, the snappy performance. Uh, Calls are fine, the internet works fine, radio works fine. Speaking of radio, uh, here's the version of the radio. Um, I remember I'm using the T-Mobile US, uh, so the um, actual Windows Mobile ROM may not be the same for you, but this is the radio version that I'm using. And you may have to try your own combination if you have any issues, but with this combination, and with this process for booting, I have no problems with robot voice, I got no volume issues, calls are very clear, everything works great. And as you can see here, although it looks kind of sense-like, this is not the HTC Sense. I'm using the um, Launcher Pro, and I got the upgrade because I really like Launcher Pro. Um, I actually think the Launcher Pro um, has uh, something up on HTC Sense. I, Seriously, I just I hate HTC Sense. Every time I use it, my phone crashes in Windows or Android. And there you have it. That's what I've done. And this phone works perfectly. Everything on this phone works. Can't wait for the um, gingerbread version. <laughs>